Throughout history, unicorns have captured our imagination like few other mythical creatures. These magical beings, surrounded by an aura of mystery, have found their way into the stories and traditions of cultures around the world, each adding its unique touch to the myth. It's really interesting to look back and see that even the ancient Greeks, who were famous for their myths, believed unicorns were real. But they didn't think of them as just characters and stories. Instead, they imagined unicorns lived in far-off lands. And different stories from Greek scholars and adventurers about meeting unicorns made people believe they were actually real. One of the most fascinating parts of the unicorn legend is the belief that their horns had the power to heal and protect against poison. Just think about how amazing it would be to have something that could keep you safe from sickness and danger. Even Aristotle, one of the greatest thinkers of his time, thought unicorns might be real, though he was a bit skeptical about the magical powers of their horns. The story takes us to ancient Greece, where Theseus of Nidus, a doctor and historian, wrote about unicorn-like animals in India. His work from around 398 BC is one of the first mentions of creatures like unicorns, suggesting that real animals, maybe even the Indian rhinoceros, could have inspired the unicorn myths. In places like Assyria and Babylon, unicorns were more than just myths. They were powerful symbols of strength and purity, often shown with a sacred tree of life. Kings and leaders used unicorn symbols to show their power and holiness. During medieval Europe, unicorns were admired as symbols of purity and grace, closely associated with the immaculate virginity of the Virgin Mary. Art and depictions from this period shows people's admiration for unicorns, portraying them as majestic and magical beings. In Christianity, the unicorn took on a deeper meaning, representing Christ himself. Early Christians interpreted the unicorn's horn as a symbol of the cross enhancing the creature's image with layers of purity, power, and salvation. This symbolism was widespread in medieval art, where unicorns featured prominently in various artworks. This introduces us to the narwhal, often referred to as the unicorn of the sea, as it seamlessly blends a touch of the unicorn myth into the natural world. Often mistaken for a unicorn horn, the narwhal's tusk was highly prized for its perceived ability to purify water. With its long spiral tusk, the narwhal is like a real-life unicorn found in the cold Arctic waters. People, especially European nobles, have been fascinated for centuries, treasuring their tusks for supposed magical powers. In the Arctic waters, our focus shifts to the narwhal and the beluga whale, two creatures that narrate a story of survival and adaptation. The beluga, transitioning from light gray to pure white as they mature, earns the title of the Arctic's shapeshifter. These social and playful beings, reaching lengths of up to 5 meters and weighing as much as 3,500 pounds, gracefully navigate the Arctic seas, exploring shallow bays to deep, icy waters. On the other hand, the narwhal, with its unique spiral tusk, calls the cold waters of Canada and Greenland home. These remarkable creatures embark on extensive journeys, traveling over 1,860 miles in search of their preferred meals, such as polar cod and Greenland halibut. Narwhals are found primarily north of 60 degrees latitude and have a special bond with their icy surroundings. The male's distinctive tusks, which can grow impressively long, have captured the human imagination for centuries. Interestingly, in the past, these tusks were a big deal in trade circles, often sold as exotic treasures or crafted into jewelry and ornamental items. They were so prized that royalty would shell out huge sums for them, believing they could neutralize poison or cure illnesses. Though we now know these tusks don't hold magical powers, they continue to be one of the natural world's captivating enigmas, still sparking our wonder and curiosity. The narwhal tusk is not just for show, it's incredibly sensitive, loaded with up to 10 million nerve endings. This amazing trait gives narwhals a heightened ability to detect even the slightest changes in their icy home, such as how salty the water is. Imagine getting a chill from eating ice cream. That's how narwhals can feel changes in the water, with their tusks so finely tuned to their environment that they can experience heart rate changes with varying salt levels, showing just how important their tusk is for their survival. But the tusk is more than just a sensory organ. It also plays a key role in how narwhals get along with each other. When male narwhals engage in the gentle act of rubbing their tusks together, known as tusking, 
They're engaging in deep and meaningful communication. This behavior allows them to establish identities and hierarchies without resorting to aggression. It shows a side of narwhal society focused on connection and hierarchy through tender interactions rather than confrontations. When it comes to feeding, the tusk proves handy again, debunking old myths that narwhals use it to spear fish. Instead, they use their tusks to tap and stun fish, making it easier to catch their meals. Now you might wonder where exactly this tusk is on a narwhal. Well, it spirals out from the left side of their upper jaw, twisting in a leftward direction. While most narwhals sport just one tusk, there are a few exceptional cases where a narwhal might have two, which is quite a rare sight to behold, and the tusk's purpose has been a topic of curiosity for scientists for many years. Narwhal reproduction is a careful and timed affair. Mating takes place discreetly within the ice during spring, leading to a patient 14 to 15 month wait for the birth of a calf in early summer. Females might wait up to three years before having another calf, showing the care and energy they put into raising their young. Narwhal babies are born in the warm summer months, coming into the world tail first. These tiny calves, about five feet long and lightly covered in blubber, grow quickly thanks to their mother's nutritious milk. In the early days, they stick close to their mothers, learning to navigate their chilly underwater home. Migration is a big part of their lives, taking them on long trips through the Arctic's hidden waters. These aren't random travels, but purposeful journeys from places like Baffin Bay and Davis Strait to the warmer waters of the Canadian Arctic archipelago. In the cold of winter, they dive deep, up to 1,500 meters under the ice to hunt for hidden treasures of the sea, proving their incredible ability to dive and adapt. When spring comes, narwhals head to the brighter, food-rich waters of their summer spots, where life starts all over again. They stick to these special places, returning every year for birthing and feeding. In these warmer, shallow waters, narwhals go through a molting process, rubbing against the sea's rocks to shed their old skin for new. The importance of these migration paths to narwhals is huge. They act as vital roots, ensuring the survival of these majestic creatures by helping them find enough food and secure a future for their offspring. Apart from being fascinating for their iconic tusks and mysterious appearance, narwhals are incredibly social animals. Their life is a series of gatherings, from small groups to large pods of thousands, changing with the seasons. Their communication is a rich mix of sounds, clicks, whistles, and echoes. Each playing a part in their echolocation abilities and social interactions. Imagine the high-pitched clicks, whistles, and even bangs echoing through the chilly waters. These sounds do two important things. They keep the narwhal groups connected in their huge watery world and help them find their way and catch food in the not-so-clear waters. The narwhal's famous tusk, which looks like a twisted mystery, also plays a big part in how they interact with each other. For male narwhals, the tusk is more than just a part of their body, it's a sign of their status. They show it off and even gently fight with it, which could help them in the complex social scene of finding a partner. When it comes to narwhals in captivity, the narrative takes a different turn. Unlike their relatives, the beluga whales, who seem to adapt well to human company in places like aquariums or zoos, narwhals are rarely kept in such environments. Narwhals are made for the wide and harsh Arctic Ocean, traveling long distances. Keeping them in small spaces is impractical given their potential length of up to 18 feet, not to mention their long tusks. Sadly, history has shown us that narwhals don't do well in captivity. Take for example what happened back in 1969. The New York Aquarium became the first place to have a narwhal. This young narwhal named Umiak was taken from the wild. However, less than a year later, Umiak died from pneumonia. A similar situation unfolded at the Vancouver Aquarium in 1970. They took in a young male narwhal named Kila Laguk, two females and three calves. Despite the excitement it initially caused, this effort too ended in heartbreak, with all the narwhals passing away within a few months of their arrival. The stress of captivity and their sensitivity to their surroundings, partly through their tusks, means living in such conditions is risky for them. 
On the other hand, beluga whales seem to adapt better to life with humans, which is why we see them more often in shows and research centers. But for narwhals, their true home remains the icy waters of the Arctic, where they've lived freely for thousands of years. Preserving the narwhal, aka unicorn of the sea, is crucial, especially in the face of challenges like habitat loss, heightened human presence in the Arctic, and the impacts of climate change. This also includes the fact that the Inuit in northern Canada and Greenland have traditionally hunted narwhals for meat and ivory for centuries, despite it being a regulated subsistence hunt that continues today. That's why it's highly important for us to understand the unique biology and behavior of narwhals to develop effective strategies for protecting these enchanting creatures and their habitats. By doing so, we can help ensure that narwhals are not endangered and continue to thrive for many years to come.